That's about $150,000 anyway. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. I, I, my only question is, um, well, for, I'll preface my question by saying that the, I think the schools, in my experience, is most deeply with Pond Cove, do a terrific job of, of, of welcoming volunteers into the schools and taking advantage of them. I, I've had experience in other districts where um, parents were, were treated much more uh, frequently as a necessary evil. Um, <laughs> 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 and so I, I, I'd like to thank you, Tom, for, for uh, what you've done at Pond Cove in terms of, um, of welcoming parents as volunteers. And my only question is, is this, is this budget of $690 in order to s sustain 22,000 hours of volunteer services, is it enough? Or, do we, or, or um, should the school board be considering doing more to, to help support that, those efforts? It's enough. <laughs> I haven't heard any big requests for the supplies and so on, but you're right about the spirit. I think the board of recognition and support of the program would be good. The, the whole school would bring support. Okay. Are there any other questions on volunteer services? That brings us to the office of the superintendent. Yes, you should be glad that uh, I'm not applying because this account would be a lot higher. I'll <laughs> the meager, meager budget that you have here for the office of the superintendent. But, uh, <laughs> I'll let the new sheriff deal with that. In all seriousness, if you've got any specific questions, for the benefit of the public, uh, the kinds of money that budgeted here, uh, besides salary or stuff like photocopying leases and telephone expenses and advertising, printing, um, dues and conferences for the superintendent, superintendent staff. So if you have any specific questions about any of this stuff, and in all seriousness, I think it's a, it's a very good budget to support the new superintendent. I mean, it's not extravagant, but it does provide um, your new superintendent with access to what he or she will need. And this budget is up 0% over last year. It's the exact same number. Questions? Do the legal fees in the office of the superintendent uh, include uh, all the buildings, including instructional support or? Structural support's the only one that's separate. They've got a separate budget line. It's about, what was it, 8,000? OK. So our total legal expenses is t are 27000 That's what we budget. Can I ask, and uh, I asked this when we were talking, I think 8000 my personal view is 8000 is small for IS. That, that is just inherently a litigious area. Uh, can I point something out, David? Yeah. Um, it was $8,000 because the board took it to eight last year um, because they wanted a handle on what was coming in. It, that is not a reflection at all on Dom's uh, uh, responsible budget planning. I, I don't think my um, comment was, was no, that way but all. I didn't. I didn't want anyone to assume that IS was not putting the money in their budget that um, that they should be. I think Dom had asked for a certain amount the year before the board took it. I don't know. Is this ringing a bell? It's ringing a bell, and I, um, I could take this down a path which will cause conflict, so I won't take it down. Yeah. 8,000, um, we took it down to 8,000 what we wanted reports. Right, Remember. right, but that's why it's at 8,000 now. And if it's lower, um, that's because Dom was asked to present what he presented last year, or what he had last year, and that was a board decision. Okay, can I ask my question now? Because it wasn't about the 8,000. It was okay. about, for the total use of this system, we have 8,000 plus with $27,000. That seems like, the, knowing what I do know about legal fees, that seems like a very, fairly small number. Well, you know, it's the approach in special education. I mean, uh, Dom's using an approach that's um, parent-friendly, user-friendly. I mean, what we try to do is provide students with the services 
that they need in order to be successful. If you run special education by the letter of the law and you're just providing, in other words, taking a minimalist approach, then you better bolster that $8,000. But I don't think historically we've had um, too many due process hearings. I think uh, in the past five or six years, I'm looking at Dom, um, there's been a couple, zero. Okay, so, I mean, that's a pretty good track record. And it's those hearings that become costly. I, I'm saying in the vicinity of 25 to 30,000, but I was involved with one, uh, it was $80,000. So, I mean, they, they go all over the place. But historically, we haven't had any of those uh, expenses in this district. I know we have one coming up. So I think we're pretty well set. You know, and the insurance policy covers it. Um, it's got a 5,000 deductible, so, I um, mean, that's the other good news with that account. So I think you've got enough um, in, the, in both those legal accounts. Now, having said that, I'd probably have an $80,000 hearing, but uh, well, Murphy's Law. Again, to make it clear, I'm not simply talking about structural. but last year we had a, a hearing where we had to hire counsel on suspension and expulsion of the student. There are expenses that a school has. A $22 million business with a $27,000 legal budget is, in my experience, small. Yeah, it is. Actually, but I think it's because the way, um, you know, we do business, quite frankly. I mean, the whole approach is, you know, it's a student-friendly school system. It's a parent-friendly school system. It's, it's not a school system that, um, you know, it wants parents on the same side of the fence. And so, I mean, if you're always going to war with people, uh, yeah, you've got to have a pretty hefty legal thing. But it isn't how the school system operates. It's a very different culture. So um, I think you've got enough there. I don't see us picking unnecessary fights with people or, you know, we'll provide more than what the law calls for in order to make sure that kids are successful. It costs us a little bit more in the instructional support, but it's, I think it saves you a ton in legal fees, plus it, you know, we've got a 90% customer satisfaction in special education. I mean, that's, that's pretty good with um, a challenging population. Other questions about the superintendent's budget? That's it. So, okay. So that gives us the opportunity to move uh, on to the budgets of each of the individual schools. Uh, and because Ken listed them this way, I guess we'll start with the high school. If you take the high school, I mean, if you take salaries out of the high school, I mean, for the benefit of the public, we're spending $362,724. So. And just to give you a perspective, if you put salaries back in, you know, it costs us $4.6 million to operate the high school. So again, I point out, when you look at the principal's accounts, um, where the money is, isn't in the 362000 though I want you to ask Jeff, any questions that you have in order to develop clarity about what he's recommending and what I'm recommending. But um, when we get to staffing, as is the case with each of this, the schools, that's where the rubber hits the road, if you will, about costs. So questions about the high school budget? Just a quick one. I assume that there's a heading for each one of these columns a year. <laughs> but, you understand what I mean? I don't understand what you mean. Well, you've got a column, and then you've got another column, and you've got another column. What differentiates the column? Oh, yeah, There's yeah. different school I see. year. The, yeah. yeah. I see. Sorry. So there's no heading on the top. last one. Is a proposed one. Okay. So I bet. Yeah. Start so you can label path. those nine, ten, and eleven. The first column is the budget from 2000, this fiscal year 2009. The
The second, second column is fiscal year 2010, which is this year, and the third column is the difference. I mean, the fourth column is the difference. The fourth, fourth column is the delta, right, between nine, 10 and 11. No. There's a money change and a percentage change. Okay. Mary? Um, I have a question around um, pro any program changes. They're not listed in here, and we frequently get asked questions. And so um, if it's appropriate, I'd like to ask you if there are any program changes in this budget that um, we would want to know about. There, there really are not. Um, The only, there's no, no, there is no program change. There's a consideration of making AP biology, I was just talking to Kate about it, um, a, a senior class as opposed to what it has historically been as a junior class. But other than that, there are no proposals for program additions. Um, there are no proposals for program subtractions. Um, our kids will be signing up for classes um, over the next several weeks, we're a couple weeks away from starting it, um, but they'll be signing up for classes before the April vacation. Um, and then we always, from time to time, have to respond to particular signups. Um, if there are, for example, not enough students to sign up for a particular class, then we wouldn't offer that class. But it's not anything that we plan for. That's the kind of the normal course of business. But there are no proposals for new programs or deletions of programs of any sort. Kathy? Question about the parking fees. Um, I guess that would be under you. Yep. Um, last year the school board decided to institute $8,000 in parking fees. I'm interested in um, how much you collected of the 8000 and approximately the amount of time it took you and your staff to do that? Sure. Um, I don't know the exact number now. The last time I talked to Pauline, I think we were a little over $7,000. Um, as students get vehicles or kids get driver's licenses, um, there is a steady, a steady trickle, I guess, of additional fees that come in with students. Um, quite honestly, when the weather gets warmer in a couple weeks, Mr. Uh, Troy Henninger and I will um, begin to make occasional sweeps with the parking lot. I will say the board is aware that it wasn't my, I wasn't rah, rah, rah in favor of parking fees. And part of the reason was I was concerned, Kathy, about how much time it was going to take. But I will say that we have been very efficient um, in, in creating a system of essentially, and, a, and also very simple in creating a, sim, a system of just putting under kids um, windshield wipers, warnings. Um, we didn't go crazy at the beginning. It was a process of education. And then we had, I think, at least two warnings that we gave to students under their windshield wipers before we began to get a little more stern. Um, and the vast majority of kids and parents cooperated very quickly. Um, we had to send, um, I think in the end, we got it down to just a very tiny handful who had received several different warnings. Um, and I sent a letter home to that group of parents. That precipitated a few letters to, to me and, which, and to the school board as well. But all in all, I, I will say quite honestly that it's taken less time. I think Troy and I have done three or four sweeps of the parking lot in the first couple months of school, and each one takes about 45 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, as you probably remember, I voted against the parking fees last I did, year. I didn't remember. <laughs> but, um, I, was out, I was outvoted by the board, but I continue not to support the parking fees for the high school, um, partially because it takes your time, but primarily because it concerns me that we are putting part of our budget um, um, issues on the backs of students who can park anywhere else in Cape Elizabeth for free, um, except for at the high school. So um, I will make that plea, and the board can do what they want with it. But I would prefer that we not have that as a $8,000 line item. 
Thank you. You're welcome.